Did you know that the voice of the title character in the UK version of the 1990s video game Gex was supplied by the same person who supplied the voice to the Sorting Hat in the Harry Potter movie series? My name is Marco. I live in Orlando. So you're watching Marco in Orlando. And today we're going to take a look at some of the fun facts of what I think are three of the most underrated games in the, the Sony PlayStation 1 generation. That's this game, this game, and of course this game. So we will take a look right now and stick around. Hey everyone, I'm Marco in Orlando and I cover news, new releases, and all things video games from the perspective of a longtime journalist and even longer time gamer. On this channel, you're going to find gameplay videos, you're going to find reactions to news, and you'll also find lists like the one you're watching right now. Now, if that sounds like fun and you're a 90s gamer who, like me, comes from the days when, you know, blood in video games went to Congress, when a quick-witted ghetto was scandalous, and when Leisure Suit Larry had everybody blushing, uh, join me on this channel, hit that subscribe button, like the videos, and we will have some fun on this channel. Now, let's go back to the 90s, shall we? Now, I am 43 years old, and people of a certain age remember the 90s fondly. I do as well. Uh, it was an era when grunge and Eddie Vedder ruled the world by pretending not to care about it. It was when the Dallas Cowboys and the Chicago Bulls, two of my teams, dominated their sports. And it was when video games moved from 8-bit to 64 bits of Mario. Yes, gaming was on fire in the 1990s. And it was there was so much out there to do. But what happens when so many good games are released in quick succession amidst an era of limited platforms and young gamers with even more limited wallets? Well, that pushes some fun games out onto the brink of obscurity. And 24 year, years later, I'm here to bring them back, as so many others have done uh, in previous YouTube videos, as you know. So let's move on without further ado and take a look at three video games released in the 90s that I loved and sadly most likely will not be making returns anytime soon. Now, if you like this list again, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, uh, but more importantly, keep an eye out because I, I, this, this will not be the only list of three obscure games or I should say games that won't be coming back because I'm, I'm, I know there are a lot that I loved in the 90s and we'll be moving forward. But for now, let's take a look at these three. We're talking about Gex, we're talking about Parasite Eve, and we are talking about Legend of the Gaia, and uh, so let's let's take a look at some of that, them right now. It all started so simply. I had just finished my usual morning routine of nude funker size, fired up the Barca lounger, grabbed a quick bite to eat, and prepared to watch some serious tube. <laughs> Little did I know. My snack was sent by Rez. Yes, and little did I know that this was actually going to be a pretty fun experience once we started going. As you can see, this appears to be nothing more than a standard platformer sideways, but you're going to see right here when he jumps onto the ceiling to a roof that there's a little bit different in that there's more direction allowed and more variety of how you pass certain stages. What that does is, is bring some strategy into the equation. In the US version of Gex, the voice was supplied by Dana Gould, who also has had roles in The Simpsons and Family Guy. In the UK version, the voice was supplied by Leslie Phillips, who as we said was in the Harry Potter series as the Sorting Hat. Now Gould had his own style of comedy that could be heard in some of the scenes from the game coming from Gex. For Johnny, read a book. Sweet like candy. Rocket Man. I can't even start to tell you all of the funny phrases that he says during the game. I mean, there's one where he says "phasers on stun." There's references to Kid and Play and Don King, and then there's the "Are you from Kryptonite or are you just happy to see me?" line. It's a little bit risque, but nonetheless, as we said, Gex kind of went out of conventional kind of uh, normals. The plot of Gex seems to be a very definitive homage to television. Swallowing the fly like he did in the opener transports Gex into a world where he has to defeat several levels that are based upon different television genres. 
There's a cartoon land, for instance. There's a jungle level that resembles the Indiana Jones. There's a kung fu level, and of course, there's also a sci-fi level. This fun jaunt through television lands really struck home with me because, frankly, I was a teenager when this came out, and so I watched a lot of television. So a lot of these quips, a lot of these phrases, I recognize from just watching television shows. So that's one reason that I really wish it would come back. But there hasn't been much talk about that ever since the last installment came out in 1999. RPG fans played Final Fantasy games in the mid-1990s. The developers of The Legend of the Gaia came in and introduced a new battle system that infused martial arts with traditional RPG elements. That difference allowed the game to set itself apart a little bit and earn itself a legion of passionate fans. The story follows Vaughn, a young man who is voiced by Wataru Takagi. Takagi has quite a resume. He still does voices in the video game industry and recently was in Final Fantasy VII Remake and also did Brad Vickers' voice for the Japanese version of Resident Evil 3. Vaughn and his companions, Noah and Gala, have to, surprise, surprise, save the world through a series of plot twists that threaten to end humanity as we know it. While that element is somewhat generic to the genre, the battle system is definitely not. Gamers enter a series of commands to their characters who perform them depending upon their skill level. It's kind of like a Street Fighter meets Final Fantasy meets whatever else RPG game you can think of because it really is unique and it really is different. And it was something that I, I loved playing when I was younger. I promise you trivia, so here's a little fun fact for you. Takahiro Kaneko, who came up with the name Legend of the Gaia, was actually the associate producer on the other RPG game of, of the era, Wild Arms, and he was the producer of Wild Arms 2. Now I might break down Wild Arms on my own and its own eventually, but yeah, so he was he actually worked on those games and then came up with the with the title to Legend of La Gaia. I can't really say enough about Legend of La Gaia, especially when I put it in the context of the era during which it was released. At that time, Final Fantasy dominated role-playing games, and the little game called Wild Arms was also doing well, as were the Legend of Zelda's. But this game was different and this game was unique at the time and the experience was so different that I really thoroughly enjoyed it. You have to remember that's coming from an unabashed Final Fantasy crazy nut job like me who uh, would play any Final Fantasy game at that time all the way through, no questions asked. But Legaya really helped me realize that there were different kinds of games and I really hope somebody remakes it or re-releases it or does something similar in the near future for today's platforms. We can only hope that PlayStation 5 might be the place for that to happen. <laughs> During the op opening sequence of Parasite Eve, one thought dominated my mind. What the hell am I about to play? Parasite Eve was a sci-fi role-playing game set in present-day New York. It was based on a novel of the same name and created by the same company that built the Final Fantasy games. 
You play the character Aya Bray, a New York City police officer who has to, and stop me if you've heard this one, stop the destruction of the human race. What sets the game apart, however, is how the titular Eve plans to create that destruction. Spontaneous combustion. It's a wicked element to this villain that you learn more about as the story progresses. Not to mention, it might be one of the greatest introductions of a villain that I saw in the 90s or even since then. This was literally within the first 15 minutes of the game. The fact that they continue the music even as this destruction happens is such a great storytelling technique and it really puts home how vicious this attack is. What a way to go, pal. You can probably tell that the soundtrack was a big part of Parasite Eve. As we said, this was a Square Enix project, so it won't surprise you that composer Yoko Shimomura also worked on the original Kingdom Hearts series, as well as Final Fantasy XV. Unlike the other two games on this video, Parasite Eve has actually been discussed by some people as a potential remake. In an interview with Kenny Omega for Square's YouTube channel in March, Yoshinori Katase, Final Fantasy VII director and the remake's producer, backed a return to Parasite Eve. He said, quote, The characters are very deep, especially Arya Brie. I don't know of any plans right now, but it would be a waste to not use those characters. End quote. Here's hoping. For now, we'll have to settle for gameplay footage. Oh, and that battle music. 